If you're a non-coder like me, and you've struggled to learn AI coding tools for the longest time, probably gave up a few times like me, I'm making this for you. And it's a game plan on how to learn AI coding. So it's like as basic as you can get. In the very beginning, when you don't know anything, there's a massive gap, not just from skills, but from a mental standpoint. Getting into these AI coding tools is challenging. There's a lot of objections that you tell yourself. You know, I used to think that anything cursor related was just for engineers only. I had concerns over debugging, and just workflow stuff. I just didn't know where to start. And that's, I think, what a lot of people are going through. Only until two or three weeks ago have I really gotten over the hump where I am now having fun. I kind of know what's going on. I am familiar-ish with Cursor, Cloud Code, Supabase, Vercel. I'm able to debug small errors, create features that I could only dream of building in WordPress. And there's never been a time where I felt closer to actually building one of these really cool lead gen automated directories where someone can fill out a lead form and then that gets distributed to like 20 different businesses. That sounds boring to a lot of people, but you gotta understand as a non-coder, that's like the dream directory that I've been wanting to build for like a couple years now. I just didn't have the technical know-how and I didn't wanna spend money on getting engineers to create something that I just, I didn't even know like what was happening. And I know for a fact, a lot of people are on that cusp where they want to get to the fun part, but they don't really know how to get there. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about really, really basic stuff. So if you already played around with Cursor before, this will be like elementary school level stuff. And my goal is to get you to the fun part, which is just prompting things into existence and you just learn while building. So basically I'm gonna be covering the main mistakes that I was making that gave me the sense of progress, but it really wasn't progress in terms of learning AI coding tools. And second, I'm gonna talk about the order of events that I took that I feel like led me down the right path when it comes to learning properly. I'm talking about learning the fundamentals of coding, the stuff that you really just need to know to get to the next step, not everything all at once. Watching someone who's building something really, really basic, going to build it yourself, right? Applying that knowledge. And at that point, you kind of have a general idea of how all your tools work together how they communicate with each other, how to navigate cursor and super base. That is the entry fee to going buck wild with prompting and just creating whatever you want. And then third, I wanna go over how to get set up with cloud coding cursor. And I'm talking about really basic stuff like opening your terminal, creating a project, opening it in cursor, installing cloud code, adding rules to your .md file, connecting it to super base, because that's honestly what was really hard to find two or three weeks ago when I started like learning seriously. So let's start with the mistakes that I was making when I was going down this journey like six months ago. The first one was just spending way too much time building these beautiful front ends using Lovable, V0, or Bold. And the reason I consider this a mistake is because I was spending tens of hours prompting and creating these beautiful websites and they would have no backbone, no functionality, no features that actually worked. And I learned that they're just not built for that. I mean, I knew that and heard that a bunch of times from other people who said that they were just front end builders, but I kept trying anyways, hoping that if I just kept prompting, it would be able to create this advanced logic and this SQL schema that would basically be where the information and data is stored and that allows features to work. And that leads me to my second lesson, which was not working on the database first. I know a lot of people do start with the front end still, and then they build out the super base later. But for me personally, I feel like that instant gratification of having something beautiful and not work was more discouraging than just tackling the hard part, which is getting your super base data database set up and then creating the beauty later on once I know the functionality works on the back end. And when I came to this conclusion, that's when I realized I had to move off of a visual builder. I had to go to Cursor because Cursor and Cloud Code within Cursor is able to help you with that. Those are the tools that will actually help you get the advanced logic down and it will walk you through the whole steps. And by the way, I'm not going to cover how to create your database in this video, but it's actually pretty easy, especially for really simple features. You can literally just ask Cloud Code within cursor to give you SQL schema based on best practices and you can copy and paste that into Supabase and that's what generates your database tables. Then you just import the data from there. And the third mistake I kept making was being resistant to learning the fundamentals. You gotta understand as a non-coder, coding is like this treacherous mountain where you don't even know where to start. I think I was just so overwhelmed by the idea of coding that I just forgot to look in the most obvious places. And then when you listen to other people's opinions who are saying, oh, Claude code is not coder friendly. Oh, it's only for engineers. Oh, you can't actually build useful, valuable projects on it. It starts to influence you in a way where you're just like, I'm just not gonna even try. And let me just tell you, as someone who didn't even know how to open up a project in Cursor just two weeks ago, it's 
not that hard. Like you can definitely learn it. You just need to spend like a solid 15 to 20 hours staring at the screen until you get it. Especially with Claude Sonnet 4 and Claude Opus 4, which is Claude Code's most recent LLM models. I feel like it's a turning point and I used Sonnet 3.5 and it was just like having a very hard time debugging certain things. Claude Sonnet 4 is like insanely good. If you're gonna learn, this is actually a great time to learn in my opinion because those are relatively new and they've been great at reducing the headaches around debugging and issues and errors and stuff like that. So those are the mistakes that I made and now I wanna talk about the learning order that actually took place that led me down the right path of learning these AI coding tools. So the first thing that I did was I actually watched this Udemy course on Claude Code and Cursor. The course was okay, but mainly it was just cheap and it allowed me to see what it looked like for someone else to build something within Cursor using Claude Code. It's not like the best course in the world, but it did give me the fundamentals and it introduced me to what React and TypeScript was, what that looked like, why you should use those languages. And it also walked me through the basics, some of which that I'll cover later on in this video, which is just getting set up in the terminal, opening up Claude Code and Cursor, and just, yeah, kind of like the basic fundamental stuff. I didn't even go through the full course. I think I watched the first four to five hours and I knew enough to go and experiment and play around. And once I get to a point where I'm stuck, I'm just gonna go back and learn. And that was way less intimidating for me rather than just like absorbing all the information at once. So after that, I basically just applied what I learned in the course, starting with building out my database. And again, I kind of explained why I do that, but another reason was it just helped me navigate through Subabase. For me, it's like, still somewhat confusing, but at least now I know where the database is, how to add SQL schema, how to change certain policies or rules. There's so many features to Superbase that I needed to know the 80-20 of Superbase, and I did. Anytime I'm in Superbase now, I basically spend my time in the same like three or four or five spots, and that's pretty much it. But there's like so much going on if you don't know what's going on. So at this point, I've generated like a really basic website with Claude Code and Cursor, and then after that, I basically focused my efforts on creating really simple features. Things like a sign up page, a login page, a dashboard when you log in. These are things that I always took for granted and I just kind of overlooked, but you have to think about these things if you're going to create a really robust feature rich directory. It's like level one of database practice. So I would just prompt it, test it, debug it if anything broke. And once you get to the point where you can use a simple feature like a sign up form and that data is showing up in real time in the back end in Superbase, and you're able to log in using those credentials, you basically got a working feature. And then you can move on and start prompting more advanced features from there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the learning workflow that I created for myself that ended up working for me. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the basics, but basically I'm just gonna be creating a project in the terminal and then pulling it up on cursor, installing Claude code, and then adding rules to my .md file. I'm sure I'm gonna miss some things and there's some best practices that I don't know about yet, but I just wanna get you to the point where you can start prompting if you want. So there's one thing that you need to install before we actually open up the terminal and create our project, which is you just need to go to nodejs.org and download nodejs. And this basically lets you run certain nodejs commands in your terminal. So you can just go through the motions here and just choose the one that makes sense for you. So once you have this installed, I'm just going to go ahead and click command space and look up the terminal on my Mac and it's going to pull up this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a project folder that lives on my desktop and that's just where I like to keep it. You can keep it wherever you want. So the first thing I actually need to do is just type in CD desktop. This basically just moved me to my desktop directory and now I can make a command to create the actual project folder. So you can type in MKDIR and then like your project name. You can name it whatever you want, but this is kind of the format. If I were to type it out, it's all lowercase with dashes to separate the words. I'm just gonna name it phrase test project and then press enter. So that command basically created a new folder. If I drag over my desktop, I know it's kind of crazy, but this is the folder that it created phrase test project. And right now it's empty. I'm gonna go ahead and just write a command that says CD phrase test project. And what I'm doing is basically telling the terminal to 
enter my phrase test project folder because our next command is going to utilize Node.js and we're going to basically tell it to create this project within that folder. So this is telling it, hey, look into this folder. This is where I'm going to be creating the next thing. So the next command is where we're going to utilize what we just downloaded on Node.js.org. And from my understanding as a non-coder, it's more or less the engine that allows you to run commands in cursor and Claude code. So just roll with me here. I don't really know exactly what it does either. The command is n npx create next app at latest and I can go ahead and click enter. Now it's going to ask me a bunch of questions, but let's just go for it. And it says, okay, to proceed the next app 15.4.5. We're just going to click yes. What's your project name? Phrase test project is fine. What do you like to use TypeScript? Yes. What do you like to use ESLint? Yes. What do you like to use Tailwind CSS? Yes. Would you like your code inside an SRC directory? No. Would you like to use app router recommended? Yes. Would you like to use turbo pack? No. Would you like to customize the import alias? I'm going to say no. And then now it says using NPM initializing project with template. And now you can see this kind of like loading signal here. As you can tell, I basically just went with whatever the default yes or no value was with these questions here. Again, I think it's unfair to try to explain this to you, but I did kind of break each of these down and understand why it's yes and why it's no. So I'd probably recommend the same. Here it says added 336 packages, basically success created phrase test project. And real quick, if I just show you the phrase test project folder and we click into it, now we have this and there are these folders that have been added. And at this point, we can go ahead and open this project in cursor. I already downloaded cursor. So obviously you have to download this if you don't have it already. So I'm just going to go command space and type in cursor and open this up. And from here, I'm going to click on open project. And I'm just going to find that project that I created, which is right over here and just click on open. And here we can see these are all the folders that were created just now. And now we are officially in cursor. Now, the first thing I do is I actually go down here until I find this like up arrow and I will drag it up because this is my terminal and Claude code actually works with your terminal, not the actual chat box that is in cursor. So I can actually just delete this and there is a way you can just move this to the side. Let's just go panel position to the right and you can kind of like drag this and make it look nice and neat. But you're basically going to use this as your chat box and this is where you're going to be prompting and doing all that good stuff. The first thing that you need to do to install Claude code is right over here and there's actually installation instructions. If you just type in Claude code, you'll find this article and it basically walks you through what you need to do, right? We're using Node.js 18 plus. So to get started, we just need to run this command. So I'm going to copy and paste that, head back over to cursor, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this. Enter. Awesome. So after that's done, I can just go back to the article where it says that the next command is just typing in Claude. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to type in Claude, enter, and it says, do you trust this file? And I'm just going to say, yes, proceed. And this is kind of like the getting started setup here. It says, welcome to Claude Code. Uh, you know, you can do these types of things, right? So if you're doing it for the first time, you'll probably see this instead. I logged out because I was already signed in and I just wanted to show what you would probably see if you were just getting started for the first time. So this is what you would see after you run the command Claude. So I'm just going to go through this. You can choose the text style. I think dark mode's fine. Now it's going to ask what your login method is. You can use Claude account with subscription or anthropic console count. I already have a subscription, so I'm just going to go with this. But just to give you a quick look, you do have these three options. I think most people choose pro if they're also just getting started because it's not that expensive at $17. So I'm going to go ahead and just do Claude account with subscription, click enter. And it's basically just going to allow me to authorize this. And then I can close this window, head over to Claude and it says login successful, click enter to continue. And it says just some security notes. I'm just going to click on enter, use Claude Claude's terminal setup. Yes, I will use recommended settings. And then now this is what you will see and what we saw kind of the first time I uh, ran the command Claude. I am going to go ahead and just run this first command init. And here it says initialize a new Claude.md file with code based documentation. I'm going to go ahead and click enter. And the reason I do this is because the .md file is actually where you can put a lot of your rules. I believe this is the same 
same as cursor rules if you've heard of it it's basically a document where you can put any rules that are specific to your project so here you can see all the things that it did if we scroll down we can see the actual file that it's going to create and the contents of that file and down here it says do you want to create claw.md and you can use the arrow keys to change the, your answer here but i'm just going to go ahead and click on yes and you can see that it's working and it's going to create that file and we can see right here that it did create this and it's finished. Created claw.md file with essential development information. And we can go ahead and click on this. And this is the file that it created. You can see the architecture has some notes around the layout, the directory structures, font setups, right? You can change this if you want. So I learned that this is kind of known as a best practice where in your claw.md file, you can add certain tasks or basically yeah, a certain set of rules that can improve your overall experience using Claude. From my understanding, people like to use rules that optimize the output of code because sometimes you will just want to change something small and then AI code will just generate a bunch of code for something that shouldn't really need that. And next thing you know, you have a massive code base. And in general, I think a lot of people want to avoid that for several reasons. I'm sure you can find some solid rules that other people have used with their projects. I just use the same ones that I learned from the course that I took, which is pretty generic, but solid. It says first think through the problem, read the code base for relevant files and write a plan to tasks slash to do.md. Every step of the way, give me a high level explanation so you can kind of see what these rules do and you can literally just copy and paste these and just copy and paste them over here. So I basically just added this section right over here in my claw.md file. So at this point, you can basically start to build your directory or your web app, whatever you're building. I'm not going to go too deep into like this full video tutorial, but just to explain what I did for my next steps is I just kept it really simple and probably said something like create a directory for a luxury restroom trailer. The reason I kept it simple was I actually don't want to create the full thing right now and have all these features. I'm just trying to have any page really that resembles a luxury toilet directory so that I can test the database functionality. And basically, if I ran this, it would create this website. It might have a few pages, but it's going to look really simple, like really basic. After I have that set up and I have a local development server where I can access the website and check it on my local server, that's when I would go into database stuff. And maybe I'll make more videos and let me know if I should do this. But that's when you can play around with the sign up or the register or the login forms. And you can connect your Superbase into Cursor by connecting your API keys, which I'm sure there are some videos around. But that's where you actually build out the first layer of what's going to make certain features function on your website. And I feel like it's not too bad. You can literally just ask Cloud Code here to walk you through it. Ask for SQL schema that you can copy and paste into Superbase. The important thing is that you now know how to get set up. And this is kind of like where roads start to diverge. You, me, a thousand other people are probably going to take our own paths from this point and you don't have to go and work on the database stuff and if you do you don't even have to do a login or sign up feature so that's why i'm probably just going to pause for now but you definitely do want to get superbase set up you want superbase to communicate with cursor you just need to share the superbase api keys for the project that you create in superbase here and just remember you can use cloud code to just tell you what to do so the last thing I'll leave you with is that there's a pretty cool feature in Cloud Code. Right here, you can see that question mark for shortcuts. If you click on tab and shift at the same time on the Mac, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. It says auto accept edits on. If I click it again, there's plan mode. Plan mode's really useful and one that I use really often because if you enter a prompt on plan mode, it'll basically tell you what it's planning, what it's thinking, and it won't actually go and carry out the task. So it's like less consequential before you go and act on it. So that's pretty much what I've been spending all my time doing. I've been trying to learn as much as I can and absorb as much as I can from these AI coding tools. I do wanna make more videos like this and just share what I am learning as it goes along because I don't really like talking about things until I've tried it myself. And yeah, that's why this is really basic because I only learned the fundamentals and feel comfortable to a point where I can speak about it. So let me know if you want more videos like this. I feel like there are some small debugging tricks that I have found work pretty well. Probably common knowledge for anyone who's spent more than a month in AI coding tools, but figured it could be helpful. So if you do want to see that video, just let me know. With that, if you got any value out of this, I am happy about that. And I appreciate your support. So I'll catch you in another video. See ya.